Review time is the home for all things theme parks. Stay up to date with our videos by subscribing and tapping the bell icon. Welcome to Review Time. Tonight, your friend and host, Luke Carroll, will take you on a journey of history and fantasy for all to enjoy. Nothing is more intriguing than the story of Fantasmic. From its moments of development as a Haunted Mansion show, till its final version seen in three parks around the world, is a story of all three Fantasmics powerful enough and interesting enough to hold your attention, you are about to find out. For we now invite you to join Review Time for a story beyond your wildest imagination. Long before Fantasmic would fill the space, one of the first entertainment offerings to utilize a Disneyland boat on the rivers of America as a floating stage dates back to the 1960s where Dixieland at Disneyland featured performers such as Louis Armstrong performing on the Mark Twain, as well as Mardi Gras-style floats floating in the rivers of America. Originally, the one-night-only event would go on to become a staple for the parks over the 60s and into the 70s before fading away. The river would next be used for a nighttime show in summer of 1981 with a Saturday night concert series called The Rolling River Review, featuring big-named artists for the time, including Frankie Avalon, Buddy Rich, and more. The shows proved to be a hit, but the issue was big-name talents required big payment. At the end of the season, entertainment went to management and said, rather than do The Rolling River Review next year, give the $200,000 to us, and we will create a permanent show that won't walk out the front gate at the end of the night. Two significant ideas were proposed and explored for this new nighttime spectacular in the park. The first was Fantasia Live, where they would have erected three large projection screens on Tom Sawyer's Island and shown excerpts from the famous film, whilst a live orchestra played the music on a floating barge. The second, more exciting proposal though, was the River Haunt a show focused on the Haunted Mansion, where the 999 Happy Haunts would have left their humble abode of the House on the Hill and brought the Rivers of America and Tom Sawyer Island to life. The show would have included horseless carriages sailing down the river, ballroom dancers twirling on the waters, and even ghost pirates battling it out on the Columbia. Unfortunately, these plans never came to fruition due to monetary reasons as at the time, Disney was stuck in the middle of a hostile takeover by renowned green mailer Sal Steinberg, who was attempting to buy up a majority share in Disney so he could split up the company and flip the individual pieces for a higher price. It wouldn't be until the 1990s that a nightly show on the rivers of America would be back on the table, and it was the success of 1988's Illuminations at Epcot that would give the idea its final push. This push, though, wasn't due to the incredible success and guest response to Illuminations, but was thanks to Michael Eisner seeing how the show caused the World Showcase restaurants to be booked out for dinner months in advance, something he hoped a new nighttime show could do for the New Orleans Square and Frontierland restaurants at Disneyland. In September of 1989, Eisner greenlit the project to be completed by 1992, leaving Imagineers with a tight 20-month turnaround. This show would take elements from both the River Haunt and Fantasia Live projects that had been abandoned almost 10 years earlier and combine them into a brand new show called the Imagination River Spectacular that very late in the project would see its name changed to simply Fantasmic. The job of directing the brand new show was given to Disney legend Barnett Ricky, who was able to draw on her many years of experience creating entertainment for Disney when designing the show. One of the breakthrough technologies used in Fantasmic was the three 60-foot wide mist screens, which acted as a temporary projection space technology that was first explored by Ricky 10 years earlier for a cancelled 35th anniversary show on Sleeping Beauty Castle. 
Ultimately, the $30 million Phantasmic also included other technologies such as lasers and pyrotechnics, which were combined with a cast of almost 50 and a crew of the same size. Over the 20 months of construction, the rivers of America were drained and resealed to help prevent the 50,000 gallons of water a day that was leaking into the soil. Harper's Mill was shifted off to the side and a brand new stage was built on Tom Sawyer Island that would be inconspicuous throughout the day but come to life at night, with many Disney characters and even a giant dragon on a stick that breathed fire through the use of powdered coffee creamer for a deliciously startling effect. The show's opening night was set for the 29th of April, 1992, with the media invited to enter the park at 6 p.m. However, at 3 p.m. that day, the verdict came down for the Rodney King trial, where police officers were acquitted of brutally beating him. This decision set off a series of riots in Los Angeles that lasted for six days. Disney understandably delayed the opening night of Fantasmic for two weeks, and quickly removed the advertising campaign about the show that said to be there when the night ignites. On the 13th of May, 1992, the show would officially debut and was an instant success. Ladies and gentlemen, we now present Smoke <laughs> and a show that we are extremely proud of that we hope you enjoy. And as soon as we move this little set away, we will be begin Fantasmic. Thank you. For the first summer, the show played three times a night at 9.30, 11 and 12.30 to over 8,000 guests per show in an area designed to accommodate 6,000. Bob McTyre, Vice President of Entertainment at Disneyland said of the show, a lot of time, effort and expense has gone into infrastructure. What we've done is build a new theatre for Disneyland. The show can be changed when there are new ideas, new technology though it would take over 20 years for those significant changes to happen, but more on that later. Of course, Walt Disney World being Walt Disney World instantly saw the success of Fantasmic at Disneyland and wanted to bring the show to Florida. Plans for the show to take place on the rivers of America at the Magic Kingdom were quickly shelved due to the low Floridian water table and no place to create a decent viewing space for the new show. So with Epcot already having a brand new nighttime spectacular with illuminations, Fantasmic ended up by default being built at Disney MGM Studios. Initially, the plans for this new Walt Disney World Fantasmic were grandiose and would have called on more cinematic moments from Disney's back catalogue, including a big action sequence where a full-size Nautilus would have battled in the lagoon with a giant squid. Sadly, the failed opening of Disneyland Paris in 1992 cut the budget dramatically for the show, and it ended up being much cheaper to build a few canoes and make a Pocahontas section than it would have been to have a giant animatronic squid attacking a full-size submarine. On October 15th, 1998, the second version of Fantasmic would open at Disney MGM Studios in a brand new purpose-built outdoor arena that could hold 6,900 people seated and another 3,000 standing in a 15-acre complex complete with a 60-foot tall man-made mountain. The show featured most of the same story beats as the California version, with a few both major and minor changes. Smaller changes include an extended bubble segment and more villains in the nightmare section, with more substantial changes, including the Peter Pan section being replaced by Pocahontas, and the finale now taking place aboard the SS Willie, with Steamboat Willie steering up top. The show was an immediate success, just like Disneyland's. And to this day, over 20 years later, the show is still packed out pretty much every night, and has been running essentially the same show since opening day. The third and final park to get Fantasmic wouldn't see their launch of the show until almost 20 years after the original debuted. Upon opening in 2001, 
Tokyo Disney Sea, the second theme park of the Tokyo Disney Resort, featured a short, eight minute long nighttime spectacular entitled Disney Sea Symphony. But it was quickly realized that this show wasn't grand enough for the park it called home. And just a few years later, the park was already looking for a replacement. In the planning stages, Fantasmic was brought up, but pushed to the side in favor of a completely original show called Bravissimo, which would open in 2004. A truly spectacular show that has to be seen to be appreciated. However, entertainment in Tokyo rarely lasts for a long time, and for the 10th anniversary of Disney Sea, the Oriental Land Company finally brought over their own version of Fantasmic, opening up on the 28th of April, 2011. This version of the show would be the most unique, taking place entirely on floating barges due to the lack of land in the middle of the Mediterranean harbor. The show opened with a brand new theme song, and from there almost every section featured significant changes including new sections dedicated to characters such as the genie from Aladdin and Stitch, and all of it concluded in an epic finale of the Maleficent dragon bursting through the magic mirror, with no dragon head on a stick in sight. Of course, being Tokyo and its love for keeping entertainment fresh, this show was the last of the three to debut and the first to be retired with Fantasmic officially closing during the COVID-19 park closures, set to be replaced in 2021 with a brand new show for the park's 20th anniversary entitled Believe, Sea of Dreams. While over the years, the Tokyo and Disney World versions mostly stayed the same, the Disneyland version has seen many significant changes over its life. The first of which was the removal of the giant Ursula barge after just a few seasons of the show. Over time, other changes included the upgrading of the lighting, projection and fireworks systems. But the first big overhaul to the show came about in 2009, when for the Summer Nightastic promotional campaign, the show received two brand new flotsam and jetsam floats to replace the long lost Ursula. Though, these would only last one summer, as well as the show meaning to get a brand new full-scale Maleficent dragon, though ultimately that dragon would go on to be known as Murphy, named after the classic Murphy's Law, which states that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Murphy would eventually debut in September of 2009, months after the beginning of the Summer Nightastic campaign. 2017 would see the biggest overhaul to the show ever, completely refreshing almost every section, allowing Mickey to truly become the star. Big changes saw Peter Pan replaced with Pirates of the Caribbean, a brand new Aladdin segment, and a few others directly lifted from the Tokyo version of the show. Having been lucky enough to see every version of Fantasmic around the world, it's still that original Disneyland version that stands out as my favorite, with Tokyo close behind. I will always remember my first visit ever to Disneyland, sitting down on the riverbank and watching the night come alive right in front of me. I can honestly say that this show is one of the reasons I love theme parks and entertainment so much to this very day. From the home of all things theme parks, I'm Luke for Review Time. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing.